what is up guys this is Tito back with another video on the Redmi Note 10 Pro and during this video I'm gonna be showing you the latest parkways based on Android 13 and I have to say this ROM has been one of my most favorites in the past because of its customizations and the stability of this ROM. Also I have to mention one thing the website just looks so awesome of SparkOS detail of it just notice how smooth the website is so yeah go into the download section in the latest build section and you will be able to download this ROM. And again this is the 28th May 2023 build. The flashing procedure is very similar you can watch the flashing guide from the description. This is how it looks like in the about section and it shows devices officially supported and it shows a cool text like built with love by unsatisfied or unsatisfied 27 and here we have the android version as tiramisu or 13 and we have the sparkos version as 13.6. And again the build date you can notice from here the security patch is of latest may 5th 2023 the build version is again 13.6 the stock kernel here is the 4.14 same low hey version 1 kernel in the system settings this is how it looks like we have gestures right here and in here we have the quick loop in camera the system navigation gestures and in the settings of it we have the navigation hint the pill length pill radius and the back gesture height you can customize the back gesture animation hide IME button space back gesture haptic and the swipe to look assistant is also there by the way even with the maximum length and the radius of the pill bar it doesn't look too big this is how it looks with the like with everything maximized we also have the one handed mode as well that is working fine we have the press and hold power button action then we have the swipe to screenshot that is of course working fine we have the share edit delete and the google lens feature prevent ringing option is also there we don't get to see any system updater in this section in the system settings but first let me talk about some of the things which i have faced well i have to say there are two problems that i have noticed i would say this round definitely makes the device a little bit more hot to touch when you are doing normal to moderate tasks it's summertime already so the temperatures already are up but yeah even in ac room it's reaching like 40 to 41 degrees i was restoring my google app data backup the device was too hot to touch i have seen that that is one problem the second problem is that sometimes i have seen when i'm just putting the device on the sleep and if i'm just trying to unlock it with the fingerprint scanner sometimes i have seen it's not waking up that is one more thing to consider and this wake up bug used to happen when the device was early with the custom roms that i have seen problem has been fixed with most roms but sometimes when the device is idle for long enough time i have seen this bug Otherwise, I would say the ROM has like one of the most stable experience except for these two problems. The settings panel looks very cool. This is how it looks like. It has this oxygen scandal look and you can actually change it from the customization. We also get this Xiaomi parts and shows this Xiaomi parts text on top. And here it also has the B audio direct. You can enable it from right here. Then we have the choose headphone type and these are the headphone types. The sound quality with the headphone jack, Bluetooth and even the earpiece and stuff should be good enough. And we have normal choose preset option also the scene option is there and we have the clear speaker option as well then we have the dolby atmos and you can enable it from here even the base enhancer and stuff is there so you can customize it however you want to we have the thermal profile so you can set per apps thermal profile to default benchmark browser camera etc and here we have the key profiles i have been using with the auto key profiles and we have the haptic feedback as well so you can decrease or increase the haptic feedback to change the intensity of the vibration of the whole ui talking about the basic things here safety net passes right out of the box so you can use banking apps in this rom also vaulty calling and stuff will be working fine but i don't have a sim card in the device that's why you don't see a vaulty logo here and here the dm info shows as l1 so you can stream netflix or amazon prime videos intended to be even the ir blaster if you're noticing that light that means it's working fine also it does have the pixel unlimited backup so that's cool these are pretty much the stock apps but there were a lot of apps which were already restored from my google app data backup let me talk about the stock launcher well this is the spark West launcher i think and here in the home screen settings spark launcher is actually for stopping i cannot really go into the settings and here yes this is how the home screen looks like let me try one more time okay so it still does not let me go into the settings of the stock launcher but I'll talk about it. Let me show you. This is how it looks like. To the left of the home screen, we have the Google Discover page. No issues with that. And here, swiping up will get you to the app drawer. And here, you can search for any particular app that you are looking for. The widgets are working. As you can see, the subscriber account widget. The Android's normal widget, like the battery widget, the clock widget, everything is working fine. And even the animations, if you want to see that. Yes, the animations are also 
working perfectly fine. Yes, it does have the double tap to sleep anywhere in the home screen. Also in the recent panel, there are a lot of customization. We have the screenshot, the lock app option, and we have the lens feature. Then you will also have a kill app button if you need that. And we have the clear all button right here. On the bottom, it shows the RAM usage. And if you want to go into the split top mode and stuff, they are also there. Swiping down anywhere in the home screen will get to the notification and the quick setting panel. I like this thing that the quick setting panel stays light in the light theme. And here you can edit and add multiple toggles. But let me show you which ones I have added. I have the Wi-Fi mobile data, the Bluetooth toggle, flashlight and the auto rotate night light nearby here. Do not disturb and the battery saver. In the screen recorder, this is how it looks. We have all these features like the device audio and microphone audio recording with the show touches and stuff. And the data saver, dark theme, always on display. Ambient display, heads up, do not disturb. FPS info is also there and this is how it appears. We have the Dolby Atmos and stuff like this. And the refresh rate you can switch to 120Hz, I mean up to 120Hz. And the care profiles is turned on because of like the auto profile. The smart pixels are there. Let me just turn it on and yeah, it is working. We have the airplane mode, one handed mode, hotspot and the device controls. So these are the toggles that I have added. And in the power menu, this is how it looks like. We have the lockdown, the power off and the restart option and the screenshot option. If you click here, there is the advanced reboot option. So you can directly reboot to the recovery or fast boot if you want. Let's talk about the stock camera. Well, you are getting the like camera present by default here and you can swipe up and get multiple more features like the vlog, vlog pro, slow motion and even the sticker avatar, super moon, dual video, all these functionalities are there if you need those. And in the video settings, of course, we get up to 4K 30p shooting option. The 4K 60 does not work, which shows up over here. That will not work if you even if you like switch to it, it will switch. Once you record and stop recording, the video will not be saved. So make sure you shoot up to 4K 30fps only and that will work. And even in the pro mode, there is video settings. And in here also it will show 4K 60fps, but do not go with that. Up to 4K 30fps is supported for Redmi Note 10 Pro. And even with the portrait mode, this is how it looks like. Yeah, the portrait mode and stuff should be working perfectly fine. There is the background bokeh, no issues. And even if you want to shoot with the super macro mode. So as you can see, the super macro lens is actually working fine. And yeah, this is how the photo looks. So I would say it's a good experience overall and the optimization is good. Even the 64 megapixel mode and stuff is there in case you want to use that. So the stock Leica camera is there also. In terms of Leica, of course, we have the Leica Vibrant and Authentic, both modes. Now, in the settings panel, we have the fireworks, we have the theme section, we have the monet theme engine and the accent color, background color, luminance, chroma factor and the tint background option. We have the navbar style changing option from right here. We have the font style and plethora of fonts are here. These are into this big tabs, if you're noticing. We have the OnePlus Sans, the nothing dot font and stuff. Everything is there. No issues. We have the icon packs. And these are the options. Then we also have the signal icon styles, plethora of options for that. And we also have the Wi-Fi icon styles separately. We also have the icon shape separately. And we have even more settings like the background transparency. Header image is there up to 74 options. Just notice how many options are there. Like you can switch to any option that you are liking, but yeah, I'll just put it to zero. We have the brightness slider, you can put it to show always, and the position you can change to bottom. We have the auto brightness icon, the data usage clear all button. Also, for the buttons, we have nine options up to for the notification button and stuff. Okay, so it's force closing the UI, but yeah, you can enable between the button style and the background. We have the reticker, then the colored quick setting notification, and we have the full stop edge lighting you can customize. Heads up and stuff you can customize and we have the volume panel on the left side. Even the volume panel style you can change. By default, this is how the volume panel actually looks like. Yes, you can expand the volume panel to change the output device if you want when you are connected to a Bluetooth device. And we have this phone putting into mute or silent or vibrate. And we have the volume panel style changing option as well. With the real UI style and stuff, this is how it will look. Also, there is a rise style if you want that. And we have the volume media output. About phone style, you can also change it to default centered wallpaper banner and the center wallpaper banner big. All these options are there. So you can even change the about phone section. We have the settings contextual messages and the hide user card preference. Search bar style you can change and we also have the random settings header image. And there is the setting header image and you can actually change that from right here. So this is great. And I have to restart the system UI to actually change this. 
but yeah we have the settings header text as well even the setting style overall you can change it to other options like the color os oxygen os arcane stock pixel and the google material u and there is the Arian's card ui so all these setting style you can actually change the spark os has one of the most amount of customizations and this is no different and if you want to skip this part you definitely can from the timestamps in the lock screen we have the media cover art the cover art filter and we also have the background blur effect with the media cover art the weather settings is there you can enable it and we have the lock screen clock font style and plethora of options are there just notice how many of them are there we have the lock screen clock color and the clock format you can change single or double line then we have the battery info the charging animation then we have the height quick setting on secure lock screen power menu access you can disable it for the lock screen for privacy in the pulse settings we have the navbar pulse lock screen pulse and even the ambient option is there and you can customize it however you want let me go to the status bar settings we have the status bar icons this is actually looking like very nostalgic android 7 or 8 i would say so yeah this is how it looks and you can enable the headset bluetooth etc icons from here we have the clock style you can put it to right left or hidden and the clock and date you can actually customize that you can enable the date into the small font and even the format you can change from right here this is cool let me go back we have the old signal style network traffic monitor data disabled indicator 4g icon even the wi-fi standard is there and the colored icons are there show notification count my camera privacy indicator the battery styles are these many and i would say yes in terms of other customizations this is looking small if you want that right left and the circle dot at circle etc and there is the battery percentage you can put it to next to the icon right or left and we have the battery bar as well you can enable it from here into the gestures we have the double tap the quick pull down as well and you can change it right left and we have the double tap to sleep navigation bar pixel animation also there is the show arrow keys while typing and stuff and we have invert layout right here navigation bar kind of customization is there for each button you can do that let me go back we have the miscellaneous settings in here we have the game space you can add any game that you want to have the overlay on and we have the system manager in here we have this game boost option and there are multiple sustained performance and stuff all these things we have the full screen apps and you can set per app to full screen smart pixels are also there we have the enable smart pixel option right here and even the burn-in protection and stuff is there you can change it if you want then we have the sensor block per package google services parallel space screen of animation is there add block option is also there we have the unlock higher pc in games unlimited google photo storage netflix spoof and the blink flashlight for incoming call and the customize your hardware button option is there we have the power menu we in here we have the power menu style changing option by default again this is how the power menu looks but you can also go with very old android 7 style power menu which will look like this let me show you the other power menus okay so this looks a little weird but yeah the classic style the android 8 style yeah definitely looks so dope and nostalgic even the android 11 style yeah this is the one i like very much so i'll just keep it because you can access your google home stuff from right here you can turn off or turn on lights so yeah this is very cool we also have the advanced restart and the secured lock screen but does the advanced restart actually work let me check on power okay so right now it shows power off and restart okay so right now the advanced reboot is working even with the android 11 style menu we have the secured lock screen as well so these were all the customizations in the fireworks in the display settings we have the brightness level adaptive brightness in the lock screen we have the privacy control and there is a show sensitive content on lock screen only and control from lock device then display media cover etc and in the ambient display we have this pickup option it is working i'll show you that we have the dark theme and in here we have the pure black or pitch black option if you need that display size and text option is also there of course and the night light you can customize it the live display is there we have the display mode you can change it to automatic off or outdoor bright sun mode if you put it to that the display's brightness will go a lot more we just turn it off we have the anti flicker and we have the reading mode color calibration is also there then we have the picture adjustment as well the colors i have been using it with the boosted let me go back we have the rotation setting screen saver allow window level blurs double tap to wake is also there then there is a pocket detection and the double tap to sleep even the wake up on plug is there in the wallpapers and styles this is how it looks like in the change wallpaper section there are a lot more spark waste wallpapers that you can choose from all of these and we have the space wallpapers and the strange dimension it shows unsplash and the other wallpaper so of course these are the stock wallpapers and 16 colors you can choose from with the wallpaper and basic color dark theme option is there the shortcuts you can actually change 
left and right button on the lock screen. This is cool. Let me go back. We have the themed icons and upgrade icon set up to 6x10. Now let's talk about the battery settings. This is where I feel disappointment. It doesn't have the battery temperature seeing option. It doesn't have the charging cycle, the current battery capacity, design battery capacity, anything does not show up over here. For me personally, in my opinion, this is the worst. <laughs> it doesn't give you any info. Only the battery usage. Well, I can see that with the Aku battery app. With the estimated time, it doesn't show that much. But I would say yes, it, it will give you about six hours of screen on time, no issues. But yeah, my device is getting old and it's almost like two plus years. So I would say definitely my battery health is at 81%. But yeah, it will give you six plus hours of screen on time without any issues. Even the screen off here, it shows three days. These all are estimated number guys. And the combined news, it shows about 31 hours. So that means more than a day. The battery life is decent and the fast charging and stuff will be working fine if you use your box pack 33 watt fast charger. Pretty much what I'm trying to say is that if your battery's health is good, it will give you good battery life, do not worry. In the sound and vibration settings, this is how it looks. We have the media call ring, etc. volume controls. Do not disturb and if we scroll down more, we can change the phone ringtone and stuff and all the other ringtones. Then we have the vibration and haptics in here. This is how it looks, touch feedback and stuff you can customize. Let me go back. We have the dial pad tone, screen locking sound, screenshot sound, touch sound, etc. Disabling option. Power up volume control is also there. Then we have the charging sound and you can enable it if you want. If you like the charging sound, whenever you plug in, it will make that sound. Then we have the noisy notification and the in-call vibration options. Now in the security, this is how it looks. In the settings of it, we have the quick unlock, power button, instantly locks and all of these things. Also, there is the face unlock. Let me set it up. And inside fingerprint option, there is also this unlock only when screen is on. So if you turn on this feature, it will only work when you are in the lock screen and you tap the fingerprint scanner. Otherwise, it won't work. So accidental waking up will not be a problem in this ROM. And here we have the app lock. You can lock any particular app that you are looking for from right here. So right now, let me show you the fingerprint scanner speed one more time. And here, as you can see, it unlocks perfectly fine. No issues whatsoever. But yeah, sometimes it just vibrates and doesn't wake up the screen. You have to tap again, then it will wake up. Now let me show you the pickup gesture. I just put the device on the desk and pick it up on my hand. As you can see, the screen wakes up in the ambient display. This is very cool. And here also the animation and stuff, just notice how beautiful it looks. Even the double tap to wake works fine. And tap in the fingerprint scanner, it unlocks. But for some reason, even when I have the face unlock enabled only for when swiping up, it doesn't do that. It will also like, I mean, it is always using the face unlock. No idea why. Just notice as soon as I double tap, there is a black border on the front camera. I point the device towards my face and it unlocks. Even though I had when swiping up on lock screen selected from the like face unlock settings. So face unlock fingerprint both works. And here, let me show you the app lock. This is how it looks like. I tap the fingerprint scanner and it unlocks. And this is a good thing that it shows an arrow whenever you are like using a lock tap. As you can see, it shows this arrow to tap the fingerprint scanner. And once you do that, the app will actually unlock. It will launch the app, of course. Well, talking about 120 hertz, yes, the whole UI feels fast and snappy. There are not like many problems. And here, let me show you with Twitter. And with this, if I just scroll down, yes, at the beginning, there were a little bit of stutter. Even right now, yes, there is slight bit of stutter, I have to say, but yeah. For normal scrolling with a device like Redmi Note 10 Pro, it is smooth enough, I have to say. And here, like with the test UEFI website, with Chrome, it doesn't show the like it 120 FPS and stuff. So as you can see, it's reaching about 118 plus FPS. So yeah, in Opera browser and stuff, 120 FPS is actually working pretty much. But with Chrome, it will be showing at 80 Hertz for some weird reason. And in case you are wondering about the recent panel and stuff, yes, it's a very smooth experience everywhere. And even while switching between apps, it's a very fast and snappy experience. All the apps stays open, no issues. And here are the Android and Geekbench code with a CPU stress test on this particular build. And to access actually the lock screen shortcuts, you have to actually tap and hold on them. That's when it will open or work just like this. So yeah, pretty much I would say yes, the Spark OS is a really good ROM. It has a different taste totally, but yes, it does make the device a little too hot to my liking. Also, there are some of the issues like the waking up bug and stuff may be there for you. So that's one case. But yeah, I personally won't prefer it over the ROMs like the Project Elixir and stuff. That's how I feel personally. Let me in the comments what you guys think. Give this video a thumbs up if you liked it. Subscribe to the channel if you have not yet. This is Tito from KDN Tech signing off for today. And I'll be catching you guys in the next one. Bye bye now.